7663, Designing an Exchange Server 2010 Messaging Solution. Hi, I'm Don Jones, and I'm going to be walking you through the design aspects of the Exchange Server 2010 Certification Series. We're going to start right here in nugget number one with an introduction that's going to sort of lay out the different nuggets that we're going to go through and the different design decisions and design solutions that we're going to cover in each one. We're really going to jump in right away in nugget number two, which is next, with a nugget called Different Businesses, Different Designs. And the idea here is I want to sort of prep you with the information that you're going to need to gather to begin really making smart design decisions. Now there's two aspects to this. If you're really interested in learning to make the right design decisions for your environment, well then this is the information you're going to need to have in front of you to get started. If you're really focused on uh, obtaining your Exchange Server 2010 certification, these are the bits of information that you need to be able to pick out of those scenarios because they're the bits of information that are most relevant to the design decision that the test is going to ask you to make. Now, nugget number three is going to kind of be the high-level overview of Exchange 2010 design. We'll talk about the main components of Exchange, introduce the five server roles, and, and kind of outline what each one does and what each one's for, and talk about the different administrative options that you have for Exchange. And believe me, it's a little bit more complicated than just loading up the MMC these days. And nugget number four is going to be designing Active Directory to support Exchange. Active Directory is a massive, massive component of Exchange. Exchange can't exist without AD. And Exchange puts a heavy load on AD. Even if you're upgrading from an older version of Exchange, it's wise to consider the impact that Exchange will have on your Active Directory infrastructure so that you can make sure you've got the right AD infrastructure in place for a successful Exchange deployment or migration or upgrade or whatever. Nugget number five is going to tackle the same thing from the DNS point of view. And we're not just going to talk about making sure that you've got the right DNS servers in the right locations inside your network. We're also going to talk about the DNS requirements that come into play for your external DNS, whether you own and operate that server or, or whether someone else is externally hosting your DNS namespace for you. Nugget number six is going to be designing for your workload because, let's face it, nobody wants to do a big exchange deployment and then find out they've crammed too many users onto too few servers. So we're going to talk about the value of service level agreements, or SLAs, talk about some of the ways that you would construct an SLA, talk about some of the sort of, I guess, design guidelines. I don't want to go so far as to call them best practices, but the, the general guidelines for how to load and exchange infrastructure, and most importantly, talk about some of the tools that you can use to load, test, and monitor exchange load so that you can sort of validate your workload design. Nugget number seven starts the major planning aspects for the five main Exchange Server roles. And number seven, it'll be planning the mailbox server role. And that's going to talk about stuff like hardware, server placement, high availability, how it communicates with other roles, and in this case, particularly your storage design. Number eight will be the hub transport server role. And we'll I'll cover those same things, um, the hardware requirements, high availability, server placement, and so on. 9, client access role, same things. Um, 10, edge transport server role, and this one has a couple of, of neat little things. In addition to server placement, um, we also need to consider how it communicates with other roles because this dude usually lives in an internet DMZ and not on your main network. We'll also have to talk about the Exchange Edge Sync feature uh, so that you understand what that does and when you might want to use it and what's going to have to happen if you do want to use it. We'll finish off with the last role in nugget number 11 for planning the unified communications role. And that's going to include all the usuals, hardware requirements, high availability, server placement, and so on. Then we're going to move into nugget number 12, which is really all about designing specific high availability and disaster recovery scenarios. We'll talk about things like local continuous replication, cluster continuous replication, single copy clusters, all sorts of stuff. Different specific scenarios, different solutions to meet each scenario. And then, whereas before we'll primarily have been talking about your high availability options, we're going to talk about some specific design decisions for the mailbox server, the hub transport server, the edge transport server, and so forth. We'll also talk about the need for high availability in the directory and the network, and talk about some of the, the theory and options that you have for disaster recovery, including how to combine disaster recovery with high availability. Nugget number 13, designing message routing. 
look at how routing works. Um, how Exchange depends on your Active Directory infrastructure to determine its routing infrastructure. Look at things like routing groups and talk about all the different routing connectors. Um, yep, X400, routing group, ADSMTP, SMTP, send, receive, everything. Um, things like email address policy, distribution list servers, um, how to build redundancy into your routing plan too if that's important to you, and talk about things like accepted domains, authoritative domains, relay domains, and so on. Nugget number 14, um, gosh, wouldn't it be nice if, if some people could access our super planned and highly available and disaster protected exchange infrastructure? Well, 14 is all about designing client access, and, and we'll talk about just about every way you can possibly do it. IMAP, POP, ActiveSync, Outlook, Web Services, Outlook Web Access, um, Mappy, Mappy on the middle tier, something called MOMPT, um, Auto Discover, and, and important, how to design for client access security. We'll look at things like authentication, OWA segmentation, certificates, smart cards, two-factor tokens, all kinds of stuff like that. Nugget number 15, if you're already running Exchange, is going to be just for you. It's designing upgrades and migrations. Um, I, and you know the big one here? Actually, there's, there's probably four big areas. The order in which you upgrade your servers, how to keep that free busy, that availability information and other bits of interoperability working, uh, how to do a transition versus a migration, and how to get those old servers off your network. Coming into the home stretch with nugget number 16 is designing message security, and this is a fun one secure relaying, um, how to integrate with Active Directory Rights Management Service, SMTP connector security, uh, control point encryption, outlook protection rules, and even how to integrate operating system features like BitLocker in an exchange environment. Closely related to security is nugget number 17, designing message hygiene. I love hygiene for this. Uh, here we're talking about things like filtering rules and block lists, spam, phishing, antivirus, anti-spam, sender ID, stuff like that. Nugget number 18, if you've got two different organizations and you want to share public folders, how do you do it? Well, you do it by designing in some federation and some federated sharing. So we'll talk about uh, the Microsoft Federation Gateway, how to create sharing policies, organizational relationships, and so on. We're almost there with nugget number 19. We're almost at the end. It's designing message archival, discovery, and compliance. We'll talk about things like dumpster, um, the concepts and how to design for legal hold, retention policies, message tagging, message auto tagging, managed folders, personal archives, message journaling. That's a huge one. Transport protection rules, also a huge one. And something called mail tips, which is new in Exchange 2010. And finally, whew. The last one, designing, monitoring, and reporting. Um, how to monitor message flow. How to monitor your SLA requirements, like the percentage of mail delivered in a certain amount of time within the organization. Um, analyzing message usage, the number of messages, message size, and monitoring client access services. Now, I want to point out something really special about this particular series of nuggets. Look at this word. You've seen it a lot on almost every single one of these lists I've just done designing. This is designing exchange. This series is all about the decisions you have to make before you double click setup. This isn't how to implement message security. In fact, if you want to know the how to's for whatever your design decisions were, my partner in crime, Greg Shields, has that series of nuggets. Uh, his series is all about once you've double clicked setup and you've got your design decisions in front of you, how do you implement those design decisions? Well, anyway, the practical upshot of this is that you're going to be looking at a lot of this, a lot of whiteboard, and a lot of network diagrams, and a lot of flow diagrams, and a lot of charts that help make decisions for, for different types of, of scenarios, because we're really focusing on getting all these decisions made before we double-click setup. And that's exactly how Microsoft wants you to think. When you double-click setup, they want you to already have in your head what the right decision is. So that's how we're going to do it. I think you're going to have a fantastic time. I think you're really, really going to learn to do a great exchange design. I'm ready to get started. Let's go. Mm -hmm.